Jesus and all these kind of things. And, and I start prophesying over her. And she's like, oh, I, she's like, I just, I just want to cry, but I've been holding this thing for so long and all this kind of stuff. I said, it's okay, it's the Holy Spirit. And she starts bawling and she starts weeping. And I start telling her about the true light of the gospel, that Jesus didn't die just because we're sinners so that when he died and rose again that we can get to heaven no but jesus died to remove sin to expose our value so that he could get heaven within us that everywhere we go we release the hope of glory what is that the revealing of god's power so in order to preach the gospel it's not just words, it's not just talk but it comes in power right so us out there on the streets asking people hey how can we pray for you you got pain boom let's pray pain goes you just release the gospel you got a word for somebody you release that word boom you just release the gospel these signs will accompany them that believe in my name they will do these kind of things so i walk up to this lady and i'm talking to her about you know jesus and all these kind of things um and she starts telling me about spirits oh do you believe in reincarnation all these kind of things i said heaven or hell that's all it is and she said what happens if people come they say oh but my grandpa visit me he passed away but he visit me at night i said check this out the enemy wants to come in familiar spirits he wants to present himself as the angel of light. i said that's not of god how do you know test the spirit ask him if he's if jesus is the son of god he says no that thing has to go so i start i start releasing these things to her and she's telling me oh you know but i'm in this religion and i said this this is the Holy Spirit right here. This is what it means to get baptized in the Spirit. How much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? I want the Holy Spirit. I pray for her. Jesus, come fill me right now. Set me free. I pray for her. She starts bawling and weeping. She looks at me. She said, my father and my son left me. She was, she was with a familiar spirit that, that was coming back to her, presenting itself as her son that had passed away and as her father that had passed away. She looks up at me. She says, I'm free. They left me. I said, come on, Jesus. So what are we doing? Why am I sharing with this with you? Because I want to share with you that testimony is a spirit of prophecy. That if God can do it for me, if God did it then, surely he will do it now and he will do it again. So we're here not to sit down and get what we can get. But we're here to train you, to equip you, to show you what it looks like to go out in there. So don't just come here and get everything and then go back home and sit down. No, God causes you to come here so that you can be equipped. That when you get out of this place that you can do the very same things that God did. You want to move in prophecy. You want to grow in prophecy. You want to grow in love. You want to grow in healing. And the only way that you're going to grow in healing is if you go out and do it. Start putting legs to the things that you are speaking. Now, I'm not, I'm not here to speak over you. I'm here to encourage you and say, come on, guys, what are you waiting for? You have all these things. You already have the Holy Spirit. Now he's just waiting for you to go. Stop looking for the wave of God, the move of God. Don't even look for prayer or for revival. Don't even pray to God a revival. You are revival. God says, I've made you to be become revival everywhere you go release it release it release it. it starts with you one person on fire and everybody comes to watch it's a contagious thing carry the passion of God it's a contagious thing because everywhere you go it begins to spread it begins to spread it begins to spread so what the things that you have with right now begin to move in begin to move in it begin to move in it so check this out I went into a season of my life where every time I look at the phone, and I would always see a number, and always a reoccurring number. And in the mornings, I would see 9-11, and at nights, I would see 9-11. And I would always ask God, what is 9-11? What is 9-11? And we know it's, you know, the Twin Towers and all these kind of things. And so I'm searching it up, looking, praying, asking God. And I heard in the Spirit, God says that there is an urgency. There's an urgency. Who is willing to tell people that there's an urgency in the spirit? God says that tonight the alarm is sounding. The sirens of heaven is sounding. Check this out. God says, look, look, it says that the harvest is ready. But the workers are few. The harvest is ready and the workers are few. Why do you say that the sirens is sounding tonight? Well, check this out. When you sow a mustard seed, right? The mustard seed grows into a mustard cabbage, right? And on the harvest day, you are to go there and pick out the mustard cabbage. But what happens if you miss the harvest day? It hits an expiration. So will the laborers recognize that they're out there, the mustard cabbages are expiring. But there's so many mustard cabbages, but there's little workers. Will the people of God, will the body of Christ, will we 
recognize that people are perishing, people are dying, and they're waiting for you because each of you carry the hope of glory inside of you. You have what it takes for you to lay hands. You have everything that it takes for you to go out and to do the very same things that Christ did. There's an urgency. Who will say that there's an urgency in the spirit for you to go out and begin to move? Be a sober mind, he said. Paul said, be a sober mind. Be watchful. Be prayerful at all times. Redeem the time for the days are short and the days are evil. Let me ask you a question. Are you redeeming the days? Are you redeeming the time? Are you crushing the works of the enemy everywhere you go? Are you releasing the love of heaven? Is it flowing through you? Is it flowing out of you? Is people around you seeing the God that you're talking about? Your life lived out loud speaks louder than what you are saying. Check this out. I walked up to this girl and I said, hey, I see this over here. I see you moving in business and I see you moving in fashion. I wasn't going to say anything to her. I was going to just ask her if I could pray for you. And I heard God say she wants to move in business. She wants to move in fashion and all these kind of things. She said, whoa, how did you know? And I said, check this out. What does California mean? And she goes, oh, that's where I want to go. I said, I'm not a psychic. I'm not a medium. This is Jesus. I never knew this. I never knew this. I was always, I was brought up in the Catholic church and all these different kind of things, but I said, this is Jesus. This is the Holy Spirit. This is God revealing himself to you. Do you want him? I want the Holy Spirit. I pray for her and she felt a freedom, something lift off of her and peace came in. She begins to cry. I want this. I want this. See, people out there, will you recognize that they're groaning, that the sons, that, the, that all creation is groaning for the sons and daughters to bring out and reveal who God is? Will you be able to recognize that people around you are slipping into eternity? But don't put it on something that's on your heart that makes you become like, oh, this is hard. Oh, this is a job. This is a work. No. Like what Ron was talking about. Jesus did all the doing that we would enter in upon his yoke so that when we step into these things, it's rest. It's rest. It's rest. God is looking for you to vessels. So tonight, the word of God says that in Isaiah, Jesus, God spoke and he said, who will go? Whom shall I send? Will you today, will you tonight with me declare, with, declare out loud and say, God, here we are. God, here am I. God, Lord, send us. Send us right now, right now. Just begin to pray. Begin to cry out, God, here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me, God. Make me to become one of the laborers. Make me to become one of the workers, God. Send me into the harvest, God. Prepare the hearts, God, that everywhere we would go, that the love of heaven would flow, that everywhere we would go, that we would crush the works of the enemy. If this is in your heart right now that you're saying, God, I'm tired of sitting down. You're tired of being stagnant. And you're saying with me, and you're saying, come on, I want to do this. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet. I'm going to pray a blessing. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, God, look at the hearts that are hungry, the sincerity of their hearts saying, God, look, look, God, this is something that is true. This is something that I want. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. Tonight I declare, Lord, therefore, as, as Isaiah said, who, who will go? Whom shall I send? Isaiah said, here am I. Lord, send me. And this is what God is saying over you tonight. Therefore, go and tell my people. Go and tell my people. Father, right now, I bless in Jesus' name. I bless right now boldness. God, I bless courage right now. I bless the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. Once again, God, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Right now, begin to ask for, begin to ask for another infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I promise he will touch you because he's a good father. If, 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 if. If that one man cried out, Jesus, son of David, don't pass me by, don't pass me by. He won't pass you by tonight. He wants to touch. He wants to feel right now. God, begin to touch, begin to move, begin to move, begin to move. Right now, turn to your neighbor and begin to pray. Begin to pray that, God, you would send us out. God, you would equip us. Right now, begin to pray for your neighbor. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Begin to prophesy over one another. Begin to prophesy. Move in the gift of prophecy. 
Move in the gift of prophecy. Move in the gift. God, release. God, release right now. Right now, stir it up, God. Stir it up, God, in Jesus' name. Let it be exercised now that as you begin to go out and move, you would see it increase. In Jesus' name, God, spirit of prophecy, move. Spirit of prophecy, move right now. Begin to prophesy over one another. Begin to call out the giftings of God. Begin to call out the bonus. Begin to call out who you're created to be. Begin to call out the plans and purposes of God. Speak it as though it's not as if it were right now. Speak to the white canvas, the colors of God, the beauty of God. Begin to speak to the white canvas, and whatever you speak, it shall be imprinted upon it. So right now, in Jesus' name, release God. Release God. Release God. Release Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you. God says it's a new day. God says it's a new dawn. God says, behold, your breakthrough will break forth like the morning sun. God says you've been looking for a breakthrough, and behold, it shall be established unto you that learn and, and, and old cycles will be broken off of you. God says, behold, for your family was even crying out, and you've been holding that. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. God says, yes, you will see it unto pass, for my promises over you is yes and amen. Yes and amen, because God says, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. So right now, God, I declare that, that your promises are yes and amen. Yes and amen over the things that you've given unto her, over the things that you have showed unto her. God, even in, even in the early mornings, God, even in the journal times when she writes with you and talks with you, God, that you beginning, that you were showing her plans and purposes. So, Father, I say that over her, your promises is yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen, God. In Jesus' name. So as we, as we keep on moving in this, I saw a picture of a plug. I saw God gave me a picture of a plug and I looked in the plug in between the two prongs was the body of Christ. And every time that the body of Christ would begin to touch the walls of the prongs, the electricity would begin to flow. And I heard from Ron and Ron said that we have the power. No, I heard from Jason and Jason said that we have the power. We have what it takes. We have what it takes. We already received. We already received. God says, don't even look for the, don't look for the thing to begin to plug in. God says that you are the outlet. You are the source. You are what holds the power. You, you, you cause the fullness of God to be living and flowing through you. So don't look around for where God is. God is inside of you. God is moving in you. And God wants out. Don't hold him in like a box. God says that he wants to break out of those boxes. There's no box that God can't crush. He wants to crush it all. So if tonight, if you've been feeling like, God, I've been putting you in a box, if that was you tonight, just, just begin to say, God, right now, we speak to those boxes, and we say, be broken right now. We speak to the walls, the seals, we say, be broken right now. God, that you'd step out of that box, God, we, re -let, we let you loose, God. We say, God, let you have free reign tonight free reign. God, we say, come out of the box. We don't want you in there no more, God. We want to move with you in the streets, God. We want to move with you in family. We want to move with you everywhere that we go, God, that we will dare to release you. God, we say, step off of your throne, God, tonight, and would you move, God, of justice, and would you move tonight in your love, God? Would you stir up in us, God, a passionate heart's cry for you, that everywhere you go, God, that we can't help but let you out, God. So we thank you in Jesus' name, God, in Jesus' name. He's right here right now. Just like McCoy is saying, he's stepping off the throne right now. I just feel his presence right here right now. It's just a matter of pressing. And I say right now, come even more, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your angels that come right now, your messenger angels, your ministering angels that are here right now, touching people right now. I say thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Jesus. I say he reveals himself to you right now. It says in John, it says in John chapter 18 that he will reveal himself to those that love him. Everybody in here loves him. Everybody in here has a heart for him. So I say right now, come Holy Spirit. It says when you see the Holy Spirit, you will see Jesus. When you see Jesus, you have seen the Father. So I say right now, he will reveal himself to you. Right now, in Jesus' name, come. Come Holy Spirit, even mightier. Come Holy Spirit. I just see a, I just see a river. I just see a river just flowing. Just flowing and flowing and flowing.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is so good, huh? So good. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I'll wait for a couple people to finish off prophesying and Awesome. That was good, right? Holy Spirit's so good when he comes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share a couple of testimonies. We're going to do a, a prophetic activity. Um, they're called activation activities. We did it during our Brazil trip almost every day where it just kind of gets you moving in a prophetic. And uh, it causes you to step out and take risk. And that's what it is. You know, the gifts is all about taking risk and um, faith, you know. Someone once told me, uh, you never walk on water un unless you uh, step out of a boat and look into Jesus' eyes. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus, you know. You never walk on water. So I have a few testimonies. Uh, I'll be quick with it. Um, you know, it's awesome to say that we're seeing healings happen in our church, you know. As for, um, like right after church, the past two weekends, we're downstairs and praying for people. And just this week, anybody know uh, Belle Young? People know Belle Young. She comes to our church. Well, she was walking down the stairs after church during second service, and her husband was helping her down. She uh, fractured her Achilles or something, and she has diabetes, so she didn't go for surgery. She just let it heal on its own. So she she's still needs help because it's stiff. The Achilles is stiff. It's trying to heal on its own. So she's walking down, and her husband's holding her. I'm um, holding her, and I think like on her arm. She was being very ginger with her her Achilles, so he pour, I say, hey, we're going to pray for you, so Jody lays hand on her foot, and I put my hand on her foot as well, and we pray, and then she looks up, looks up at us, and she bends her leg once, and she jumps, and she's like, what, she's going crazy, you know, she's like, what, no way, so we said, test it out, she runs up the stairs, runs back down, keeps running, she's like, no way, she couldn't do that, she couldn't even jump. The doctor said it will take uh, more than a year to heal on its own. So, you know, we're seeing that. Uh, there's another lady walking out. She had a, a brace on her knee. Pray for it. Her toes start to wiggle, and she's, I look up at her, and she's tearing. I'm like, you must feel something. <laughs> something must be going on. What's going on? She's like, I feel it moving, and I feel my toes are, are tingling. So I said, awesome. So I said, she, she could test it. She didn't want to strain it. So I said, okay, that's, that's fine. It's, Something's definitely happening. So I said, let me just pray again. So I prayed again. And as she's walking away, she was walking a lot better than when she was walking with it off, right? And then there's another lady before service we prayed for. She had actually a, uh, what, what, what happened with her? Something, right? Oh, a cartilage or something. A oh, ACL, torn ACL. So we prayed for her as well, and she felt warm. And that was only her second time in church, you know. And she got saved, you know, all at the same time. And so what I'm going to talk about is power evangelism. That's something we learned up in Brazil is power evangelism. And the best way to take people who don't know God, who don't know Jesus, from here to the cross, the fastest way to do that is power evangelism. So first I'll share a testimony that happened earlier this week. Um, 
So I work with this uh, general contractor. He has his own company, and uh, he's become a real good friend of mine. So he tells me to meet him at his yard to just discuss some, uh, help him out with some, some stuff. So I'm talking with him, and then he starts bringing up the trip. So I start telling him about it and just being real bold, not holding back on what I learned. He's a Catholic. He goes to a Catholic church in, uh, church in Makikilo. So I'm just not holding back, just being straight up. This is what Jesus is. He heals. He does this. This is what happened. And he's just amazed, like, wow, and talking about all this and that. Then he starts, um, you know, condemning himself, you know, as far as his faith. He's saying stuff like, you know, I, you know, I call myself when, when, when Catholic, but I, I, I do this and I do this and, you know, just condemning what he does. So I start pouring Jesus' love into him and say, tell him, you know, it's he, Jesus wants to love you. He's not looking at all these things that you're doing wrong. He just wants to love you. You need to just let him love you and, and just speaking love into him because that's what Jesus is, you know. He just wants to love you. Um, he doesn't see us as sinners. He says that he forgets the sin the next day, just like. You know, in First Corinthians, you know, love has no record, and he doesn't either. And he just is waiting for you to love on him. And I started just speaking that into him, you know, just the love of, of God. What, what he expects of you is just a relationship. And he goes into talking about how he has his routine prayer every morning. It's just routine, same prayer every, mor every morning. So I tell him, have you ever thought about just talking to him as if he's a person? Because I said, Jesus is a person, you know, he's not some distant God that you you can't reach. I said, he's sitting right next to you in your vehicle when you're praying. You know, have you ever thought about talking to him? And he's like, oh, I've never thought about that. We, I've, and I'll get taught that in church. I said, well, I said, next time you talk to him and see what happens. You know, I said, he's always wanting to talk to you. And it sounds like your own little voice in your head, but that's him. And I start going into how I hear prophetic words. It sounds like my own thoughts most of the time. But when I say it, it, a lot of times now, it's right on, you know, right on the money. Like things I would never know about a person. So all this is going on, and I'm building his faith and turning his, his vision around on how he sees God. So we're sitting at his yard, and at his yard, he has a little shack that this, he, there's this homeless man that he keeps there. He lives there and kind of cleans up the yard for him, and he pays him um, a small amount of money. And he says, oh, you know what? You should go pray for, this. his name is Ryan. He said he's been sick for two months, and you don't even see him out anymore, you know, outside of shack. He just has some kind of sickness. It's either in his stomach or his chest. So I said, sure, you know, <laughs> I'm going to pass up that opportunity. So I go in there. I do a simple prayer. I say, Father God, you know, you heal whatever it is that's going on in him. His chest is whatever is in him, his stomach. I said, Jesus, you do, you do it. Do your thing. Jesus name amen and I walked away I said now you're gonna see what Jesus does you know I told I told him you're gonna see what Jesus does and he's like oh thank you I said no I, I said it's not me it's I keep telling him it's, it's Jesus right so that, that goes on and he's like oh and he, while we're walking away he's still talking about God he has this interest now you know that's 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 preaching a gospel that you're just sparking people's interest you know it's not about you know just slamming them with scripture and this speaking speaking christianese to people it's just speaking the love of god that's uh, that's something that um a lot of people in here the the love part of of jesus and god so um yeah so all the way into the car shake my hand oh thanks thanks for your prayers thanks for your praying for him he worry about him this and that so i get a call the next morning and he calls me saying oh jason i just gotta tell you it's about ryan and i was like Oh, what? You know, I was, I was excited. He was like, when, when I came in at 5.30 in the morning, he was up in the yard and doing doing stuff. I said, I never seen him up that early for the past two months. So he asked him how he was feeling, and he said he was feeling good. So he's he's getting all excited. He was like, oh, I got to borrow your hands, bro. Give me your hands. I told him, no, it's not, it's not my hands. I said, it's Jesus. I said, you can have that too. You know, it's a gift from, from God that he gives. You can have that too. He's like, oh, yeah, give them to me. And I said, yeah. I told him, it's not for me. It's for me to give out to, to everybody that, who believes. And he said, oh, yeah, but give them to me. I'm going to give them to everybody. So I told him, you know what? Next time I see you, I'm going to I'll lead you through a prayer, and um, then I'll give you the gift. You know? So 
Yeah, my senior, so that, that's power evangelism. You know, we can, there's more to it, sorry, I'll say sorry after, but so we can, you know, have the person who doesn't know God, we can, you know, bake them a cake and do this and do that, and they'll get closer to the cross. This is something we learned in Brazil, too, from Tom Jones. And you can lead them closer and closer to the cross. You keep planting seeds, right? You keep planting seeds, they'll get closer and closer, and one, two, three, who knows when, eventually they'll get there, and from there they move on to glory, right? They get to the cross, move on to glory. But it's getting to the cross that's 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 all we need. Their salvation, their, um, their salvation. So, what power evangelism is is getting them from here to there in one move. If you go up to someone, you heal their their leg, and like all these testimonies we hear, how much more does God seem real to people? You know that He's not this distant God. He's a God that heals. He's God who, who, is who He said He was two thousand years ago. And with this guy, Kamaki, I've been planting seeds for the past year and a half. You know, every time I see him, talk to Jesus. But just that one moment, he's already talking about, oh, give it to me, give it to me. Just one, one sign of healing. He's like, give it to me. And with anything, words of knowledge, prophetic, all the gifts that we're given is used for power evangelism. That's what, what God gives us these gifts for, to give it out and to use it so people can go from here to there in one big step or two maybe even rather than takes years people think oh I'm, I'm on the fence you know I'm on the fence about God you see somebody's leg grow out which is something we've seen leg grow out you see somebody walk out of a wheelchair you see somebody who can run up a stairs who is just being helped down a stairs just imagine how much more they would be like man I just had an encounter with, with, with Jesus and I can't explain it you know, I need to know who this Jesus is. I need to know who this person who healed me is. So they're going to go from here. They're going to straight to the cross. And, like, we, we had a person came in to church twice, gave her life to Jesus last weekend. Just based on us talking to her, pouring love, praying for her knee, she felt something. We didn't even know if it was healed, but she gave her life to Jesus. And that's power evangelism. That's what we're called to do is get from people from level 10 to the cross. You know, from here to there with the, with the gifts and stuff. It's not made for us to, to just give out to people in church. And, and it's awesome, you know, giving our church friends prophetic words and um, words of knowledge. But it's, it's used to go out and, you know, take care of the sheep, the lost sheep especially. And, um, yeah, so the rest of this testimony is so... I show up, I, I had to go look at a job site for him, and he has about five workers. This guy that I helped, that he's just now saying, I want the gift. I want to I, I wanna give it out and all this. I want your hands. So he's saying all this crazy stuff, and I'm just blown away. This is like, after I come back from Brazil, one of the first times I've ever happened to me where someone's so excited to receive a gift of healing. So I go up to a job, like a couple hours later, I show up at the job site, and as soon as I get to the job site, they say, Oh, Jason, the healer, the healer. So I guess they were all at the yard and saw, they all know what was going on. He hasn't seen them in two months, so they see him out there, and they're all asking, what, what's up with you? Why are you out? So I got five guys calling me the healer and stuff, and so I tell them, no, it's not me. It's Jesus. And, and then they start talking, one of them was saying, oh, yeah, my friend, but he knows Jesus too, and I see he got healed and saying all kinds of stuff, and one of them was like, oh, my, my doctor, he know Jesus, and he say he, <laughs> so these guys that, that don't, definitely don't know much about Jesus are interested in it. They're talking about Jesus, you know, and it's five guys that I've planted seeds in throughout the past year and a half, you know, by wearing bless hats, they ask, they say, oh, yeah, you know, bless, I know, I know God, and and I plant seeds, but just one act of praying for someone, they're getting healed, and I got six people now talking about Jesus around me. You know, that, it, that brought them from here to maybe halfway. Come on, the guy, Kamaki, that worked, it is already to the cross. He want, next time I see him, which is tomorrow, I'm praying for him. He's going to get saved, and he's going to get the gift of healing. And his, yeah, <laughs> and there's um, a couple guys who, who I was talking to, um, that I know that would probably, I know their past, so that I'm, I'm going to work on too, you know. And that's, 
It's stuff you can do every day. You know, I used to use the excuse, I'm so busy to go out and go to a transit or walk the mall and pray for healing. I'm, it can be done anywhere at work. And just, just stepping out of the boat, looking through Jesus' eyes and just walk on water. You know, that's what, what we're called to do. And um, one more thing I want to share before we go into the prophetic act is another way we talk about the, the prophetic words or words of knowledge that you get and how this is a, probably the first time it's happened to me. And I think um, there's this lady, Jane Hammond. It was the first time I ever heard how God took her on this journey of different profi- different words of knowledge that came into this great revelation, if that makes sense. He gave a gave you a word and gave gave a vision and this and it all turned into one big big great revelation this is how this lady jane hammond gets it and she gets prophetic words for like to the end of the year big prophetic words so on monday i'm watching this documentary on um, netflix I, i'm a little science nerd so it's called uh science weird acts of science or i forget what it's called so they have this documentary on this super expensive elite violin called the uh, Stratus Varius. Anybody heard of a tr- Stradivarius violin? It's the most elite violin, the most expensive instruments in the world. One sold for $45 million of violin. And the reason why they're sold at such high cost, they're built in like the 17, 1800s, and the sound is just immaculate. And I've, list- I've been listening to, to it over and over and, y- and comparing the differences between violins and it's just that sound is incredible that's why they go for so much so I watch this and I'm like wow you know and they're talking about the secret behind it which caused me to look it up and for a little bit and and then I put it off I was like oh, okay and that's cool you know I found out about it so then two days later I get this word of knowledge Suzuki so she's talking to her friend at the time I said ask her if she knows somebody with a last name Suzuki she said no, so I was like, okay, put that one on the side, right? I'll just trust it was God, it'll come up again. So we take our daughter to a piano lesson that day, I think, and there's a violin sitting there, and she doesn't she does know th- about the whole violin thing yet. And then the next day, she's talking to a friend about finding piano lessons, and then she mentions, oh, you should go to this class because they teach the Suzuki technique. For violence so what God does to you sometimes he'll give you words so you go back and look at the violin that you miss you know you missed the vision I was trying to show you so that happens I'm like okay God you're opening my eyes there's something about this I started looking up this Suzuki technique nothing was happening so I started saying okay it must be the violin right so I go back to this violin and I started researching it and I found out um, the documentary I was watching was what it was is it, it was proving on how this violin actually g- gets its sound and they found that it's all in the wood so the wood that they make these violins out of they made like a little over a thousand this guy Stradivarius and they only got wood from a certain area and this area spent hundreds of years those trees that they got it from spent hundreds of years in a cold period so the the growth of the trees was very slow, which made the wood very dense. So you may never be able to make a violin like that because there, there's no wood that exists. So I started pondering, I was like, okay. And then God showed me a revelation. He said that, you know, this violin that has a great sound, he said, we're living in a cold period in our life. Our generation has been living in a cold period in our life. But what he's saying, he's gonna redeem that period and turn into a great sound. He said, there's gonna be a great sound that comes out of this generation. He's gonna redeem it, turn it into a beautiful masterpiece and he's gonna create this amazing sound that can be, can be touched, can be duplicated and we're gonna know it's from him. You know, and just the prophetic, how it went from all of this, causing you to research on it and then while you're pondering on it, God gives you the revelation. So sometimes when you get prophetic words, don't just discount it. That's something I just learned, you know. <laughs> when you're looking at something, God shoots your interest. Maybe look into a uh, deeper, you know, pray about it. Hey, God, are you trying to show me something? Why am I researching this violin? I'm not even into music, you know. 
making me research a violin on the internet. But it was just an amazing river. And there's a lot more that he told me, but that was the main thing was that, um, you know, these, these trees were in a cold period. And it's proven because of the rings on the tree. There's all this science thing. The rings on the tree that it, it was a tree that grew slow. And I f feel like he was saying that it's this generation, you know, this, there's a slow growing generation, but he's doing something. And you're going to hear a great sound that comes out of it. So, yeah, the prophetic is amazing, and I learn every day, and that's something I learn. And, you know, so when you get something, don't discount it. And anybody who's, who hasn't have had an impartation yet for the prophetic? Oh, we're going to do that tonight. So when you get imparted, it's going to come, you know. That by, by faith, we give it to you. You have it. And just be aware. You got to your awareness. Just heighten your awareness to hear things. And don't doubt that it's because it sounds like me. It, does it sound like you, the words, <laughs> right? For the most part, it sounds like your own thoughts, but it's not, you know. And um, we'll do impartation, and then we'll go into a quick prophetic exercise. All right, so the two. Who hasn't had impartation? Okay, so put your hands in there. So impartation is like I'm throwing a football, and you're receiving it. That's pretty much what it is by faith. Oh, okay. You guys want to come up? We're going to lay hands on you in part.
Awesome. So now everybody has received the gift of prophecy, or more of it, if you've already had it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to split up into groups of four. So just grab four people, and we're going to sit around each other. And then we're going to have one person sit in the middle. And we did this in Brazil. It's su super fun, but crazy revelation you get from it. The one person who sits in the middle is going to think of a kitchen utensil. And you're going to ask the Lord to prophesy over that kitchen utensil about that person. So you just ask the Lord, tell me about this kitchen utensil. And he's going to give you words. It might not necessarily even be about the kitchen utensil. It might be related to it. Who knows? He's, he's just going to give you words to say. And um, just have faith in what you hear. And you just say it. Like, what was the other one? Spatula was obedience because he got hit with on spatula all the time. And it was crazy. The guy received it. I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds like, you know, I'm a very obedient and all this. Outside. So it's fun, but the revelation you get from it is amazing. So if you can split up into groups of four, one person sit in the middle. And while you sit there, think of a kitchen utensil and you tell everybody else your kitchen utensil. And at the end, if anybody needs healing, go stay and pray for healing. If anybody else needs healing after this. So groups of four. Yeah. Yeah, so whoever's sitting in the middle thinks of a kitchen utensil, whether it's a whatever, I don't know, whatever, comes to mind first. Yeah, so you say that kitchen utensil, you tell them, and you guys just pray in the spirit or whatever, and just listen to what God tells you, and then you prophesy over her. So three of you, prophesy, all three of you prophesy over her. Yeah, and we'll be walking around, and we'll input our, what, what whatever we get from Jesus. So, <laughs> it's a different one. Yeah, so, whoever, who's sitting in the middle? One person sit in the middle. So you.
All right, we need to wind down. But if you need prayer for healing, you can stay after and we'll pray for healing.